Hello, and welcome to another episode of Solipsis Watched, where uh, on this episode I'm going to do something a little bit different, uh, because I watched an entire season of a TV show and feel like uh, talking about that instead, instead of a movie. I did warn everyone in the beginning intro bit that this wouldn't always be the same thing, but uh, today we're addressing the first season of The Mandalorian. Now don't worry, uh, hopefully the runtime already f reflects this, if I've done this properly, but I don't intend to delve too deeply into Star Wars as a franchise, because I could very easily make an entire channel releasing a video every day talking about aspects of Star Wars. There are plenty of people who already do that, and I don't need to do that. I'm also not the biggest Star Wars fan. Um, in general, I think it's interesting, but not incredible. Um, so, without uh, spending 20 minutes getting into my feelings on Star Wars as a franchise, let's talk about The Mandalorian. Uh, the Mandalorian's really interesting. Uh, and above all the other things that I'm going to say, it's exactly what I think Star Wars should be. Um, when I was younger, <laughs> see, now I'm doing it already. All right, we're going to do it because I have to. Um, when I was in elementary school, uh, and later than that as well, uh, I read a lot of the, um, Star Wars Extended Universe novels, um, and they run the gamut. There's a lot of them with different authors and such. Um, but what I always appreciated about them was that they told um, succinct, uh, tight stories about certain groups that more often than not had little to nothing to do with any of the established, um, you know, mainline Star Wars canon. Uh, it was, uh, you know in the Star Wars universe and used the the technology and all of the world building, but beyond that, they were mostly self-contained. And that is pretty much what I have always wanted ever since. One of the only other things that I think has really gotten that right um, in between that time and now, uh, at least that I've experienced, is uh, the Knights of the Old Republic games. Um, not that MMO bullshit, forget that. Uh, KOTOR 1 and 2, um, which are... I, I, I could spend a lot of time talking about those as well, but I won't. Anyway, um, telling self-contained stories that don't rely on uh, the nostalgia or the cultural pre... Uh, like, uh, previous cultural knowledge or a cultural background of knowing the mainline Star Wars stuff. Um, and I think that the Mandalorian does that extremely well. Um, it tells a tight story that does not rely on other pieces of media um, to make it meaningful or... Uh, explain why it exists or why certain things are the way they are. Um, and in this current media landscape where everything has to be a franchise, everything has to be interconnected, everything has to hook you for the sequel or the prequels or this side project or a completely other type of media or just toys, um, which... <laughs> Let's be honest, Star Wars since the 70s was all about selling toys. Um, after the first one came out, they knew what they were doing and they haven't stopped. Anyway, uh, I digress. Um, the Mandalorian is great and it tells a tight story uh, and it, um, it does something all its own, which I really appreciate. Um, that said, there is a lot more that I think one potentially gets out of it if you're already familiar with some of the extended lore of Star Wars. And I don't even mean like you've watched all the movies or you've watched some of the other like animated TV shows or stuff. I mean, just like, I, as I've mentioned before on this channel, not in this series, but in other videos, um, 
I'm the crazy person who thinks that the best part of the Lord of the Rings series is the appendices. <laughs> and I read those for fun because that's that's the kind of psycho I am. Um, so the like people who are love the background stuff um, will get extra extra things out of the out of the show, I think. Um, but that's not to say that it doesn't stand alone for other Star Wars fans or people who have no familiarity with Star Wars at all. Um, I think this is a perfectly serviceable entry point um, if you wanted to uh, start that way. Although I'd be very impressed with anyone who is at this point still uninitiated uh, into Star Wars in any way. Um, So, uh, how do I talk about this without talking about the plot? Um, Or any of the characters because they are plot related and so on and so forth. Uh, It's a little difficult, I have to say. Um, But I think that really points to how well integrated um, and how necessary almost everything they do in the show is. Um, That you can't divorce the characters from the story that they are in um, and vice versa, um, as well as, you know, the setting, um, the locations, the uh, all these other things. So I guess I'll just talk about the um, a lot of the production stuff uh, generally, and then I'll get into some of the writing. Um, so production-wise, uh, I think that the... Um, okay, let me back up. Uh, show The showrunner... I don't know if he's technically the showrunner, but um, by, by title, but... The main person at the head of this show is John Favreau, who at this point, Disney should just make him the CEO or something because he single handedly made them billions, if not trillions of dollars um, between his role in the uh, in starting up and then continuing the Marvel Cinematic Universe and then um, his work in uh, Star Wars um, in a variety, oh, well, but in both cases, as in a variety of roles, not only as a, a writer, as a director, as a producer, as an actor, uh, like, he deserves a lot of credit. I'm not going to say that he's, like, the best at any of those things, um, but his commitment to the craft and to being pretty good at each of those things. Um, I don't think he gets as much credit as he's probably due for that. Um, so John Favreau wrote I th- most of the episodes um, and is uh, executive producer on the show, I think. Um, and this the show went through a variety of... Uh, uh, iterations before, I mean, the, it was in people's minds even before, or a version of it was in people's minds before it even um, Star Wars was even sold to Disney. So that gives you some idea of how long how long it's um, sort of been on the the in in some version of production. Um, he has he picked out well the the team collectively that they picked out to work on this show is an interesting mix of folks, um, both writing and directing wise, um, who all bring something unique and interesting to the table. Um, but I will, I'll get back to that in uh, a few moments. Um, it's hard to comment specifically on, uh, certain aspects like the cinematography or the directing because the different episodes are directed by directed by different people and have different people's um, you can feel like if you're familiar with who is directing a certain episode, you sort of feel their fingerprints in it. Um, some more than others, but um, yeah. Uh, but on the whole, there are a lot of things that are consistently quite good. The writing is generally very good. Uh, 
The cinematography, despite differences, usually very good. The sets, the costumes, the hair and makeup, the, uh, you know, all those production things are done very well. Um, all the, the behind the scenes stuff that you may just sort of take for granted. Um, and I don't actually know what the budget was on this series. I imagine it was not that small. Um, but uh, they clearly put it to good use. Um, that said, uh, they also knew how much money they had. Again, I don't really know what that, that was. But... Um, they make very tight use of the apparent budget. There are no scenes where it seems like they had too much money and spent it just to spend it. Like they didn't, you know, do anything too crazy just because they could. Likewise, they don't have scenes that seem sparse because they had a, an idea for what they wanted to do and weren't able to execute it all the way. Um, in almost all cases, in almost all scenes, the the uh, end product is very refined um, to show um, exactly what needs to be shown and not a lot more. Um, the show on the whole is... Uh, do I want to jump into that yet? Um, why not? The, the show on the whole is very intimate. Um, and I mean that both in a writing and characterization way, um, but also in how it is shot. Uh, it is in many ways not about... It is not, it is not like many other things in Star Wars in the sense that um, it is uh, more of a character study um, than anything else that I can think of in Star Wars. It focuses on a few characters and a few relationships um, and uh, character development um, over the core, over the arc of the season. Um, and I think that's done really admirably well, especially for something that what hasn't really been done in Star Wars before, um, and, or at least not done well. Um, <laughs> one could argue that the prequel movies are a character study, but uh, they are executed so poorly that um, that all that uh, yeah that's really subsumed by everything else. Um, uh, the The show is very intimate, um, and it takes its time, and uh, it it does a very good job of not leaning on exposition to tell its story. Um, which is something that uh, Star Wars historically as a franchise has been very reliant on. Um, not telling that complex stories, but also, you know, just blurting out everything uh, blatantly instead of just letting, you know, things evolve naturally. Um, the Mandalorian does an amazing job of uh, being willing to take long, quiet shots uh, minutes at a time sometimes with little to no dialogue um, where it's all about uh, actors' expressions, actors' body movements, um, uh, using interpersonal interactions to tell the story uh, beyond, you know, individuals. Um, and... Uh, there are there are parts of it that are um, genuinely heartfelt, genuinely funny, genuinely heartbreaking. Um, uh, just excuse the uh, helicopter going by, freaking military base. Um, uh, now I've lost my train of thought. Um, th there's lots of great things that uh, this this show does um, in the story that it's telling and in the way that it tells it more, even more so. Um, but we have to talk about some of the issues with it being uh, this show in this franchise with these people, which is that there are some, there are some episodes that are stronger than others. 
there are some directors that are better than others. There's some there are some episodes that almost don't need to exist, and that can go one that can go one way or another. Um, some of the epi- uh, several of the episodes are almost completely self-contained, and there's nothing inherently wrong with that. Um, but when that episode does not stand on its own um, as a standout episode, like essentially when you have a bottle episode or something else that's a self-contained story in a in a larger series, you have to make that better than the overarching story. Otherwise, it just feels like filler. Um, and I'm not saying that any particular episodes feel like filler, but some of them are just not as str- not quite as strong as they need to be. They're perfectly decent. Um, they're just not incredible. Um, but on the whole, uh, I, I really appreciate what they, what they've done with, what they've done with the show. Um, there are a lot of aspects of this that really, in addition to things that I want from Star Wars as a as an IP, as a universe, that I'd like to see that universe put to good use. Um, in addition to all that, there were many moments in this sh- while watching the show where I was reflecting on uh, some of the best parts of a whole bunch of different um, franchises. Star Wars, Star Trek, uh, ba- the Battlestar Galactica remake, or new series, whatever you want to call it, um, uh, and even Firefly, um, where the the intimacy and the um, the nature of the storytelling and the nature of the story that was being told um, really reminded me of some of the best parts of all of those things. And I do not say that lightly at all. Um, and I finished it a few days, I finished the series a few days ago and in reflecting upon it, I'm not quite as in love with it now as I was a few days ago, right after I had finished it. Um, but that doesn't mean that I would, uh, like e- even though the honeymoon period is over, um, that doesn't mean I would uh, encourage one and anyone any less um, to watch it. Uh, I think it's, if nothing else, it's a good, uh, enjoyable show that is better than, you know, 90% of what's on TV. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if the, well, of course not. Uh, of course, the hype surrounding it is at an unbelievable fever pitch because anything in a major in, in, in a major IP like this that is anything other than mediocre or bad gets such a level of hype that it, it can never possibly match. And this is no different. Um, so don't believe the hype. Don't ever believe the hype about anything. Um, but good show. I I enjoyed a lot about it. I'm looking forward to the second season. I'm I'm a little curious what they're gonna do with it. Um, yeah, and aside from a few a few moments um, in the show where I just would have gone a different way with it, um, I was pretty pleased with what they made. Um. I really should have written. I didn't intend to review this on this series. Uh, I didn't, I thought I was going to keep it to myself, but I felt kind of compelled to talk about it. And so as a result, I don't have the notes that I ought to have um, in reflecting upon it. And I'm trying to rack my brain now to think if there's anything else I wanted to discuss. Um, but you know what? It's probably all right. Anyway. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Solipsis Watched. Uh, Let me know your thoughts about the series or doing TV shows or uh, uh, The Mandalorian in the comments. Uh, And I will see you guys next time.